Please stand. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber indeed. He who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Glory, honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, distinguished guests, reverend clergy, family, extended family and friends, all who have traveled near and far, greetings from Divine Baptist Church. We are gathered to celebrate. Can somebody say the word celebrate? Celebrate, celebrate the life and the legacy of a loving mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother. And someone might even use the word uh, sassy. Uh, but a no-nonsense kind of lady. Now, although we may have some heavy hearts and mixed emotions, it's okay. It's okay to even shed tears, because on April 6, uh, Mother Leslie Bay Stevens changed her residence to a new address. And uh, although Mother Leslie was not a preacher, uh, she preached many sermons by the way she lived her life. Yeah. Yes, by her faithful dedication, her selfless service and support. So certainly, certainly, certainly we extend all love and divine love to this great Stevens family, extended family, and loved ones of this wonderful family. Now I've already made a disclaimer, but let me put a disclaimer here in the public sphere. We are here to celebrate. Is that okay? There we go. We are here to celebrate. 
and we will follow the order of the program according to the family unless otherwise directed by the family. So as we, if we are here to celebrate, we will celebrate through praise and singing. We will celebrate through prayers and supplication. We will even celebrate through acknowledgments and reflections. And we're going to celebrate through a proclamation from God above. So may we begin this celebration, Minister TB3. I'll make this very short. Um, Pastor said she may not have been a preacher, but she preached many sermons about how she lived. So it's a really quick version of this. Uh, may the words I've done speak for me. May the words I've done speak for me when I'm resting in my grave there's nothing more left to be said may the words I've done speak for me May the life I've lived <laughs> speak for me. May the life I've lived speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, there's nothing more that I can say that the life I've lived speak for me I like this one it says may the service I give <laughs> speak for me may the service I give speak for me it says when I've done the best that I can <laughs> and my friends they don't understand May the service I give, may the life I live, <laughs> may the words I've done speak for me. May the selfless service that Mother Leslie Mae Stevens rendered and all the wonderful work that she accomplished speak for her. We'll now have our scripture reading uh, from the Old Testament, Deacon George Vaughn, followed by New Testament reading, Deacon John Woods, and then our prayer of comfort from Reverend Cynthia Wright in that order. Good morning to all. I'll be reading the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. 
thou anointed my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. God word for God people. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Condolences to the Stevens family. We're praying for your comfort and peace during these difficult days. The New Testament reading will be coming from John chapter 14, verses 1, 2, and 3, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. There where I am, there ye may be also. The word of God for the people of God, amen. Good morning. Good morning. I give honor and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I acknowledge our pastor, our first lady in her absence, and to this family, I offer my condolences. Let us look to the Lord. The psalmist says, I love the Lord because he heard my cry and my supplications. And because of that, I will incline my ear unto him. And therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. Oh, yeah. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come before your presence on this morning. We come, Father, we worship you, and we want to acknowledge you, Father, for you are the sovereign God. You are God Almighty. You are the giver, the creator, and the sustainer of life. And Lord, on this morning, we want to thank you. We thank you for the life of Mother Leslie Mae Stevens. Father, so many years ago, you gave her the gift of being a helper, serving others. And Father, she did that gift well. She used that gift well and with enthusiasm. And on today, Lord, we just want to thank you. We thank you for the countless number of families that she has helped and served. We thank you for her devotion and her duty. We thank you, O oh God, for the legacy that she leaves. And now, Father, for this family that's left as they mourn, may they look to you, Father, as their source of comfort and their source of strength, and their source of healing. You're, you are a healing for your word tells us you are Jehovah Rapha. Oh, Father, may they look to your word and be encouraged. Well, you tell us that weeping may endure for a night, but that joy cometh in the morning. Father, you tell us that precious in your sight is the death of your saints. And for anyone that has doubt, Lord, may they know that you doeth all things well. Amen. And Father, one day may they know that we will reunite with our loved ones. For your word tells us that you yourself will descend from heaven with the voice of an archangel and the shout and the trump of God that the dead in Christ shall rise first and those which remain alive shall be caught up in the clouds together to meet you in the air. Oh, what a fellowship that will be on that day. And Father, until that glorious day of your reappearing, May you keep us, this body, steadfast and movable, always abounding in your work. May we occupy till you come. Father, may you give us your peace, 
Your peace that surpasses all understanding. That God our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. We lift your name on high. It is in the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. And may the people of God say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. Amen, 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 amen. We thank uh, reading uh, Deacon George Vaughn, uh, Deacon John Woods, and Reverend Cynthia Wright. Let's give them another hand clap for their service. We're now going to have a musical selection, Sister Janet Halsey. Go ahead and give her some love as she comes. Oh, yes. My condolences to the family. May God continue to comfort you in your time of loss. I'm going to sing for you this morning. I am redeemed, bought with a price. Jesus has saved. Thank you. 
I thought you were going to come on up and join her, brother. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Sis Jan. We'll now have acknowledgments from our church clerk who wears so many hats. <laughs> Literally. The tender hands of Jesus, so gently and mild, reaching out to caress the face of a child. The tender hands of Jesus, raised in holy prayer, asking of his Father to keep us in his care. The tender hands of Jesus, hung upon a cross, <clears throat> to bring a great salvation to a world so dark and lost. The tender hands of Jesus, a nail print in each one, will come us to heaven, excuse me, will welcome us to heaven when our time on earth is done. May you know the sweet and gentle comfort of the hands of our Lord at this time of great sorrow. With sympathy, love, Journey, Kaya, and Tanya. Praying for you and the loss of your mother. There will be things that trigger tears and things that bring laughter, things that you never expected 
but they'll gently remind you of all the wonderful details that made life with your mom so precious. May God hold you close to his heart where he can feel your deepest loss and fill you with his deepest love. With our heartfelt sympathy, Joan and Roy Haskins. On the loss of your mother, she'll always be in your heart. Losing a mother is one of the deepest sorrows a heart can know, but her memory lives on a legacy of love that will always be with you. Hope that love surrounds you now and brings you peace. Bethlehem Christian Church, Sam's Ministry. To the family of Leslie Mae Stevens, I wish to express my sincere condolences for your loss. Leslie was such a special individual that no words are really adequate. She exemplified Galatians 5, 22 through 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. She brought pleasure to everyone she met and will be sadly missed. People value Leslie's friendship as did I. I regret not being able to be with you today, but my prayers, love, and thoughts surround you. I'll get in touch soon to see if I can make myself useful in any way. To God be the glory for a saint gone home. In Christian love, Dr. Leslie Leary. Dear family and friends of Sister Leslie Stevens, the partners of the Mount and I greet you with a heavy heart as you are gathered to celebrate the life of your beloved Leslie Stevens. Losing family always leaves us with a irrevocable void. Yet, Revelations 14, 13 reminds us that those who die in the Lord are blessed with rest from their labor and their works follow them. Although our hearts are grieved by the transition of Sister Stevens, we are faithfully praying for strength and comfort for you, her family and closest friends. We're continuing to uplift you through our prayers. As we bid farewell to Sister Stevens, may we all find consolation in knowing that while she is absent from the body, she is present with her Lord and Savior. Remember that as believers of Jesus Christ, we do not hopelessly grieve for our departed loved ones in the same way the world grieves. Our grief is triumphed by knowing Jesus Christ to be the resurrection and the life. 1 Thessalonians 4 provides great joy and promise that the Lord will awaken our loved ones first. Then we which remain alive shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. One day we shall all be caught up together to meet again and forever. Until that time, may cherished memories bring you comfort. Sincerely, Pastor James E. Brown, Dr. Keisha Brown, and the Mount family. To the family and loved ones of Mother Leslie May Stevens. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any pain, for the former things are passed away, Revelations 21 and 4. It is with deepest sympathy and tenderness of heart that we send these words of expression in a delicate way to try and communicate our heartfelt condolences in the passing of your loved one, Mother Leslie Mae Stevens. Although we mourn our earthly loss, we celebrate heaven's gain as Apostle Paul declared. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain, Philippians 1.21. Mother Stevens will be sorely missed, but we do not sorrow as someone without hope. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. Although her pilgrimage on this earth is over, Mother Stevens has begun a new life in a place where she is no longer hindered by any physical limitations. Yes, your heart is filled with mixed emotions, but this transition does not lead to despair and hopelessness. Let not your heart be troubled, for death is not the end, but rather a new beginning. Be it therefore resolved that Mother Leslie Mae Stevens' work is done, and may the work she has done, along with the words of our Lord and Savior, speak for her. 
Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. Now take your rightful place as ruler over so much more. Enter now into the joy of your Lord. May the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 7. Humbly submitted the Divine Baptist Church family, Dr. Tommy P. Smith, pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Myra. And now, this is a part where sometimes we have to give instructions. Even though, even though it might say so in the program, two minutes, please. Well, we know we have so much to celebrate and it's so difficult to put those words in such a short time frame. But before we begin, I'd like for all of our clergy, ministers, pastors, would you please stand so this family can just recognize the love that you so amen. And Reverend Wright is going to speak on behalf of our clergy and for those who will provide reflections. Um, please, let's go ahead, line up if we will so we can. Well, good morning again. Well, I had the privilege and the honor of meeting Mother Alessa Mae when I came to this church. Uh, it's been almost 30 years. I had just retired from the military, and I came here, and uh, she befriended me right away. One of the things she told me, she told me that I uh, reminded her of her daughter, her daughter Belinda. And that's what she treated me like for the last 20-something uh, years. She has always treated me like her daughter. Now, as her, if I had to describe her in two terms, it would be a Proverbs 31 woman. You know, Proverbs 31 says, well, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is uh, far above rubies? And that certainly was her. But even if you continue to read that passage, it would tell you uh, that she opens her mouth with wisdom. And on her tongue was a law of kindness. And that certainly describes her to a T. And I would also describe her as a Titus woman because Titus tells us that older women, we are to teach uh, the younger women. And so when I came to this church, I was a younger woman at that time. And she taught me, she taught me not, uh, you know, sit down, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. No, she taught me by the life, uh, her, the way she lived. And I learned so much for her, from her. And as she, her health began to decline, one of the things I had the privilege of doing was she, two of her closest friends, uh, they would meet with her every Friday when she, at this time she was in the bed, and they would meet with her every Friday, and we would, and, and one, she invited me to come and join. We would have fellowship with mother. Now let me tell you, mother was alert, and, and even though she was weak, she was alert, she was awake. And, and we had fellowship together, and we would sing, we got the hymnal, and we would sing her favorite hymns, uh, uh, what a fellowship, and uh, uh, leaning on the everlasting arms, of, and, and, and we sung all these hymns, and we just had a good time. And then even after that, we would pray, we would have uh, a testimony, and she consistently, she wasn't in a pity party. She wasn't like I hurt, and why me, why me? No, she was consistently praising God. One of the things that she told us was that uh, I, she said she told her children, do not resuscitate me because I am ready. I am ready, not that she was rushing life, but she had made her peace with God. She had accepted him as Lord and Savior. And so she was like Paul, you know, she was ready. 
uh, the time was at hand. Her departure was at hand. Uh, and she had fought a good fight. She had ran the race and she was ready to receive her crown of righteousness. I learned so much from her and she has been such an inspiration for me and this church. And I believe the women here could say the same. And even others, not just the uh, women, but uh, men as well. And, and so she will be truly missing. I feel like I'm just rushing, rushing here. <laughs> it's so much you want to get in in two minutes. But uh, she will be truly missed. Uh, but as the uh, songwriter said, there is a morning in the church today. It is. Why? Because a woman of God, a woman of faith, a, a true soldier uh, has gone on home. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, and the Stevens family, you have my condolences. Okay. Uh, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. Sister Lesson May Stevens joined Divine Baptist Church, usher and missionary ministry many years ago. She was a woman of strong faith a caregiver to the sick, sick and shedding disciples of the banner. She was admired for her delicious home cooked meals. She prepared for the homeless. They knew when the vine was in the house. They would receive the full course meal. Sister Stevens had a testimony Every time you saw her, God has been so good to me. She served until her health declined. Sister Stevens will be missed. If we can be of any assistance to the family, please call us. We are here for you. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Divine Baptist Church Usher Ministry, uh, Sister Robin Knight, Chairperson. Divine Baptist Church Missionary Ministry, Sister Brenda Hopkins, Secretary. Sister Mary G. Kidd, Chairperson. Precious is the sight of the Lord in the depth of his saints. Psalms 116.15. To God be the glory. How's everybody? Well, as uh, the pastor said before, this is a time for celebration. Because I tell you, my aunt was definitely one to, to celebrate. My name is Mike Parker. Uh, I am the son of uh, George Parker and, and Polly Parker, her brother. And uh, just wanted to, uh, I, I could not come here and not, not say anything about, about my dear aunt. I guess the, the, the greatest thing I can say about her is uh, when Ricky to called me and told me that, uh, you know, she's gone. And I said to myself, I said, well, if she's up there standing in line, she's going around everybody. Because she was just that special. And there was no way in the world that they were going to make her stand in line 
they said, Miss Leslie, you come on to the front. But I do remember the times that she had gone to the, uh, to the hospital and uh, Ricky would call me and say she's in the hospital and you know, we, we, we would pray about it. And then he called me back and say, well, you know, she, she's out. She's in, she's out. She's in, she's out. And I told Ricky one time, I said, you know, maybe they need to just go ahead and, and put her name on the door or, or her name over the hospital because every time she comes in, she beats it. So when he called me this last time and told me that uh, the, what the doctors had said, and I was saying to myself, I said, well, I don't know about this one. You know, it would be nice if she, if she could beat this, but it, it, was, about, it was about her time. And uh, God has, uh, has really treated her, her, her nice. And one thing that she did say every time I would talk to her was that God is good don't worry about anything and so every time I would talk to her it would it would make me feel so much better because I had nothing to complain about nothing to complain about after talking to uh, talking to her but uh, the last thing I want to say is that uh, unless you're loved she did love the family family loved her and she knew that there was nothing nothing that we wouldn't do for her whatsoever. So today is your day. We celebrate and uh, God bless you. Save a seat for us because we will be there and we'll see you soon. God bless you. Ayana, I am her great granddaughter, also known as Tinky, but I could not get up here. I could not come here and not say this. My grandma has beat cancer. My grandma has beat diabetes. My grandma had COPD. My grandma beat COVID. It is no way, no way that I could cry because I'm sad right now. I am, if I do cry, I'm crying because I'm so happy because my grandma made it and she does not have to struggle breathing anymore and she does not have to struggle walking she don't need no help she don't got to ring that bell no more she ain't got to Belinda, Nisa, Ricky you know she don't have to do none of that no more my grandma was the happiest person happiest and I know if I could see her right now she is up there dancing and if we would have had this conversation two weeks ago when she was still here laying in that bed I would ask all of y'all to get up and dance for her and praise God for her because she is unable to do it herself but I can assure you right now today that she's up there doing it herself so if we could all stand up and give God some glory for calling my grandma my great grandma home God, like she said, has been way too good to her. For me to come up here and not tell y'all and remind y'all that this is a good thing. We will miss her, we will mourn her, we will cry all the time. But I will not cry because I am sad, because I want her to come back. No, she is in much better shape than all of us are. And if you want to see her again, I think you know what to do. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to come up here and say some words about my great grandma. My great grandma is one of the strongest people that I've ever met in my life. She's also one of the sassiest people I've ever met in my life. <laughs> Though she's taught all of us how to live our life and how to know right from wrong, she also puts you in your place. She's great for that. Hey. I still remember she told me, if y'all cry, I gotta slap y'all. <laughs> My grandma was not only a great cook, not only a great teacher, a great mentor, she was also a great person. She was a woman of God, and while her time might not have been as long as we wanted, God called her home for a reason. She served her purpose, she helped she feed the homeless, put clothes on people's backs. She's taking people in where they didn't have any place to go. 
though she might be gone physically, she's still here spiritually. And I know that she's watching over us, still keeping us in line somewhat. And she's happy. She's not in pain. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about what tomorrow will bring. If, she, if she's breathing okay, if she's okay. One of her favorite songs was His Eyes on the Sparrow, and he said, it says, I sing because I'm happy and free. She's now free. She's not in pain. She doesn't have to worry about what the next day will bring. But though she may be gone, she's still with, his, she's still with us. And though we may miss her, she may miss us. If she had a chance, she's not coming back. She, she wouldn't come back. But I'm sitting down so my mom can do her thing. <laughs> but she's at peace. And that's all that matters. Stevens was my grandmother. I'm the baby girl. But if they can get up here and talk and acknowledge and say some words, so can I. So my grandma be fussing right now because it's on my phone and not on paper. So I just want to say some acknowledgments um, first. Um, the Leslie, um, the family of Leslie Stevens would like to thank Divine Metropolitan Funeral Services, the staff of Centera Healthcare, First Care PC and staff, and we wish to express our sincere um, appreciation for all the prayers, the phone calls, um, the cards, the visits, the flowers, and all your acts of kindness during our bereavement. But to my family, and everything that everyone has said is true about my grandmother. I'm definitely gonna miss her cooking, for sure. But for my family, and this is a message from my grandmother. So, she said, you did all you could. You always gave more than expected. You provided me with love and support. We must all go through trials and tribulations, but don't lose faith because victory depends on you. You stood beside me and loved me until I took my very last breath. So smile because victory is mine. This is my story. I can breathe again. I'm with my Lord, Savior, and Jesus Christ. Take care of each other until we meet again. I love you all, Leslie Mae Stevens. And I would just like to acknowledge her children, if y'all can stand her children, her grandchildren, her great-grand, and her great-great-grand. Can y'all please stand? Now these are all the individuals that was there when my grandma literally took her last breath. And I just want to tell them, thank you for everything y'all have done for her. And I just want to thank everyone for taking time out of their schedule today to come celebrate the life of my grandmother. Thank you. everyone. <laughs> well, my name is Sabrina. Um, I'm Grandma Lassie May's granddaughter. <laughs> That's what she called me. I met her 21 years ago and I must say she always say God give it and God take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> she have left me with so many memories. She have given me so much advice, good advice, and so much love throughout these 21 years. On behalf of my daughter, Mark Carol, too. Um, that first young lady that came up, she watched both of them together. They was born around the same time, and she had one on one leg and the other. And she was definitely a servant, a cook. And um, she told me something. I will always pray with Grandma Lassie May. And she told me, she said, if something ever happened to me, I want you to pray for my family at my funeral. 
So it just took everything in me, but I'm going to do exactly what she told me to do, and then I'm going to take my seat. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, you're so awesome and gracious, Father. We just want to thank you for the life of Grandma Lassie Mae. And God, we just give you the glory for everything that she have instilled in us, all the love, all the cooks, all the things, Lord God, that she have given us, Lord. And Father, you are so mighty and powerful and awesome, Lord God. You knew it was her time. And Father, I just lift up the family to you today. I pray for their strength, Lord. I pray, God, that you would comfort them, Lord God, comfort their hearts during the difficult times. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would be with them, Lord God, in those times when they are alone, when the phone calls stop. God, you would give them the peace that suppresses their comprehension, the peace that would guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God, we trust in you. We do not lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways, Father, we acknowledge you, and you will direct our path. So as we go through the day, as we go through the days, we got Grandma Lassie May, Father, we know that you are with us. We know that we can rest upon you. And so, Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you for her love. Thank you for all the things that she have given us in her time here. And let those things forever be in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let's give everyone certainly some love for getting here and sharing those thoughts. Now I know that we always put these things in the program, but I know you've already read the obituary as soon as you came in. So, um, Sister Jessica Futrell is going to bless us through song, minister to us through song, after which we will have a word from the Lord. Jessica. Good afternoon, family. I too am coming in the spirit of obedience. About a year ago, cousin Shelly, unless May's uh, granddaughter, called me and she said, Grandma said, do you know this song? She wants you to sing it at her funeral. Then I called my mama Gloria. I'm like, why is she asking me about now singing at her funeral? But like Reverend Wright said, she had already made peace. So she knew what she wanted. And so I'm coming in the light of obedience. <clears throat> I've had some good days I've had some hills, hills to climb I've had some weary days And some sleepless nights but when I, when I look around and I think things over, all of my good days, I'll wait my bad days and I, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see the road I ask the question, Lord Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me Although my weary eyes cannot see, so I'll just say, thank you, Lord. 
I, I won't complain. You see, God has been good to me. He's been so good to me. More than this old world or you could ever be. He's been so good to me. He dried every one of my tears away. Turned my midnights into day. So I'll just say thank you, Lord. I'll just say thank you, Lord. I, I, I won't complain. You see, God has been good to me. He's been so good to me. More than this old world or you could ever be. He's been so good to me. He's gonna dry every one of your tears away. He'll turn your darkness into day. So I want you to say, thank you, Lord. Unless a man is saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't, I won't complain. He dried every one of my tears away. Turned, turned my midnights in today so i'll just say thank you lord i'll just say thank you lord oh thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord i won't i won't i won't I won't complain. Come on and give this betrayal another hand. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on this preacher now. Anoint my mind, anoint my mouth, anoint my head, anoint my heart. So the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be pleasing and acceptable according to your will. We desire a word from you, O oh God. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. And any way you bless on today, we will be more than satisfied. And we will not complain. In the name of Jesus, we seal this prayer. Amen. Amen. And amen. Certainly we thank those who have shared and spoken so fondly of Mother Lessie May Stevens on today. I trust the Lord and I trust the word that he has highlighted 
for this hour and for this occasion. And I pray that he will speak to us individually as well as collectively. It was a passage read earlier by Deacon John Woods from the New Testament, John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. And it began by saying, let not your heart be troubled. When you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Then he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And you know, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. For the next few moments, I ask you to consider this thoughtful yet curious question. Will heaven be worth it all? Will heaven be worth it all? The thought of there being a better place, a better place for the saints of God to live after their time on earth has ended. That thought has cheered the hearts of God's people for thousands of years. Take, for example, Abraham back in Genesis chapter 12, and we're reminded in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 10, Abraham will tell you, yes, it, it is worth waiting for. He will tell you it is worth leaving home and family. Abraham will tell you it's worth being a stranger and a pilgrim. Abraham was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. So Abraham will say, yeah, it's worth the hardship. It's worth the pain. Heaven is surely worth it all. Take Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos. Uh, he caught a glimpse of that great city. John will say, yes, it's worth being exiled from family and from friends. It's worth the loneliness, it's worth the pain, it's worth the suffering. Yes, heaven will surely be worth it all. Yeah. Apostle Paul describes that amazing experience when he was caught up into the third heaven to the very realm of God. And Paul saw some things that he was not allowed to repeat. But Paul says, hey, heaven is worth all the pain and the struggles that come my way. I've seen that great city. Paul says, heaven is surely worth it all. Amen. Well, my friends, family, when the Lord saved us, he placed within us a desire to be with him. So we rejoice, we sorrow, we suffer, we win, we lose, we stumble, we fall, but we get up and we go on again, all because we, like those great witnesses I just mentioned earlier, have caught a glimpse of that place, that place where we have never seen, but Yes, yes, yes. We would want to be there, as they would suggest, more than we would want to be here. Second Corinthians 5 and 8. Oh, yes, we are confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So allow me to share just a few reasons why that is true. Number one, consider the place. Consider the place. It is a special place. Jesus calls uh, uh, heaven my father's house, my father's house. Well, a place like that has to be holy. It has to be filled with glory. It has to be filled with joy, filled with love, and filled with peace. So after Paul saw that glorious place, he said in Philippians chapter 1, hey, you know what? For to me, to live is Christ. And to die is gain. He says, look here, I'm in a situation with two choices. And number one, he says, look, I could go on living here. Uh, but I know what I want to do. He says, I'd rather depart and be with Christ, which is far better. So it's a special place. But it is a splendid place. Jesus says, in my Father's house are many mansions, uh, dwelling 
place. In my father's house, well, that speaks of opulence and grandeur that nothing in this world can compare to. It is distinct in its dimension and design. It is distinct like a jasper stone, what we would consider today as a diamond. In appearance, well, it is reflecting of the glory of God. This city is surrounded by a high wall, a high wall with 12 gates and 12 gates in this wall, each gate guarded by an angel. There's something about this number 12 in Revelation and verse number 12, but watch what it says. The names of 12 tribes of Israel inscribed therein and it's resting on 12 foundations with the names of the 12 apostles and the dimensions of 12 thousand furlongs mm. and that's on each side that's about 1400 miles and guess what this is it's in that 1400 miles in height also but not only that if you were to put one edge on the Atlantic Ocean the other edge would be somewhere around Denver Colorado if you put one edge on the Canadian border the other one would be a down around Miami yes but let me tell you something else about this design of this city John describes the materials. He tells us that the wall is made of a diamond and the city, the streets are made of transparent, pure gold. Uh, yeah, the foundation thereof of 12 precious gemstones. It is distinct in its dimension and its design. And the gates of that city is made of pearls. The gates of the city are made of pearls. But let me tell you how a pearl is formed. A pearl is formed out of pain. The grain of a sand, the grain of sand gets trapped inside of an oyster and it irritates the oyster. And then the oyster begins to be a layer upon layer of calcium around that grain of sand. And after a while, a pearl is formed. Well, this pearl is the oyster's answer to pain. I think you would agree that Mother Leslie Mae Stevens had her share of pain, but we can rejoice today. Why? Because there's no more pain. Yeah. I heard a scripture read earlier, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Why? For the former things are passed away. No more crying, no more dying, no more pain, no more suffering, no more sorrow. Heaven is a special place. Heaven is a splendid place. But let me tell you that heaven is the safest place. Let not your heart be troubled. Heaven will be a place of peace. No affliction on earth can touch us there. That's why you can say that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. And let me tell you who will be there. The sovereign God will be there. The sons of God will be there. The saints of God will be there. And if you ask Apostle John, well, what else can I find there, Brother John? He say, well, let not your heart be troubled, my brother. Uh, there will be rest for Mother Leslie Mae Stevens there. See, sometimes your labor your labor goes and it's unappreciated. Sometimes you can be misunderstood and you give up everything that you have and it appears that you accomplish nothing. Yet you labor on. Why do you do that? Because you want to honor the Lord with your life. That's what Mother Leslie Mae Stevens did. She honored the Lord with her life. And you know something better is waiting for you you know that heaven awaits for you. You labor because you know that there is a place of rest. So Mother Leslie May labored long. She labored as long as she could. She labored as much as she could, but she had a confident assurance that yes, I know the Lord has prepared a place for me, that where he is there I may be. Yes, 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 
She knew that Jesus would one day say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Yeah, come on up a little higher, and I'm going to make you a ruler over so much more. Enter now into the joy of your Lord. Yeah, he ends here in verse number three. I will come again and receive you unto myself. On April 6, 2024, God sent his angel to rescue Mother Leslie Mae Stevens. Why? So she could enjoy. Hallelujah. So she could enjoy some much needed rest from all of this earthly labor. In verse number three, when he says, there where I am, that you may be also, that means there's going to be a promised reunion. Hallelujah. Hey, Colonel Parker said, yeah, it's time for a reunion, y'all. No, 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 not only will we be with him, but we're going to be like him. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Why? For we shall see him as he is. Come on up here, my brother Paul. The Apostle Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Yeah, but we shall all be changed. How long is it going to take? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. At the last trump. What's going to happen? The trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And what's going to happen to us? We shall all be changed. Why? Because this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. So yes, I think that heaven will be worth it all. It is a special place. It is a splendid place. It is the safest place where you can find rest. And yeah, when God rescues you from this earthly labor, that where he is, there you may be also. And oh, what a reunion there's going to be. The sovereign God is going to be there. The Son of God is going to be there. The saints of God is going to be there. Somebody give God some glory. And if you know like I know, like you know that you know, you ought to sing the wondrous love of Jesus. You ought to sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place so while we walk uh, this pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when our traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse, <laughs> hallelujah, of him in glory. Will the toils, yeah, of life repay. But that's not all. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. And we shall tread the streets of gold. Oh, when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus. We're going to sing. We're going to shout for victory so if there's anybody in the building who feels like I feel why don't you help me give God some glory yeah will you help me give God some praise will you help me magnify him will you help me exalt his name oh magnify the Lord with me let us, let us exalt his name together from the rising of the sun till the going down of the same. His name, his name, his name is worthy to be praised. Well, I gotta go now. I'll see y'all later. But be not dismayed. Come what may, whatever be tied. God will, God will, I say God will take care of you 
and take care of you and take care of all of you. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say yeah. Say yeah. I know he'll do it. I know he'll do it. Yeah. So Mother Stevens will want you to know, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Go ahead and believe in him. Mother Stevens say, don't worry. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy. Anybody feel some joy? Anybody feel some joy? Well, joy comes in the morning and this morning time. So give God glory. Give God praise. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yeah. Say yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the next thing I know, he says, watch this. Glory, glory. Mother Stephen say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. She says, I feel like a Timex watch. I'll take a licking, but I kept on ticking. But now I'm ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have. I have kept the faith. I finished my course. Now henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. But not to me only, but unto all of them also who loves his appearing. Well, all I gotta say is, Mother Stevens will leave you with this. Everything is all right now. Everything is all right now. Come on and give God glory. Come on and give God praise. Go ahead, give him some glory. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. I heard, I heard. Says Betrayal say, I won't complain. He's been too good. So heaven is worth waiting for. It's worth waiting for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We glorify you. We love you, God. And we thank you now. For the life, for the legacy. And now, God, as we continue, we pray for your peace, your peace that surpasses all human understanding, to guard our hearts and our minds as we live in Christ Jesus. God bless you. And even though usually it's on a Sunday morning, the doors of the church are always open. And as we prepare for the next phase, my prayer is that God will comfort you and keep you in Jesus' name. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout victory. When we all get to heaven.
shall wear a crown oh, I shall wear a crown oh, when it's all
anybody asks you where I'm going, where I am going, so I'm going up the yonder, I'm going up to See ya.